Hi, this is John with Performance Plus. If you're like most tennis players, you want to get more racketed speed and more power on your forehand. But for most of us, when we try to do that, we lose control of the ball and we become inconsistent. You know, it's often said that the forehand is the easiest shot to learn, but the hardest shot to really master because there's so many things that can go wrong. In today's lesson, I'm going to cover key things that you need to focus on to generate more power, but also maintain control over your forehand. So first of all, for most players, when we think about generating more power, the first thing we do is try to muscle balls and we introduce tension. And of course that limits and restricts the fluidity of our swing. So we want to make sure that we're loose and relaxed, but of course not so loose and relaxed that the racket is out of control. So my point of reference, and I've said this many times in videos here on the YouTube channel, and I really want you to get this in your game, is that the point of reference for grip tension is such that you can feel the weight of your racket head. So you can just a simple experiment. You can come out here and say the forehand contact point, and if you grab tight, the racket head disappears and everything gets locked up. And now you're just tight and you're not gonna be fluid and relaxed and get good power. So when you're out here to the contact point, you can grip it tight and feel the racket head disappear, but now just soften it so the racket head weight can be felt. And it almost makes my forearm turn outward to the right for a right-hander. So you can just see my arm turns out. And this is actually a powerful position to be playing the ball in. I don't want the racket head to be level with my hand. I want it to be soft and let that forearm rotate out. And what that does is it puts my, my swing in a position from the shoulder where I can really deliver a powerful movement in conjunction with having a soft hand on the racket and I can feel the weight of the racket head. So that's the first key thing you have to get built into your forehand to generate more racketed speed. So as a final thought on grip tension, one of the key ways that you can really monitor and manage your grip tension on your racket is to make sure that your non-dominant hand is in control of the racket in the ready position. So whenever I'm between shots, my left hand is in control of the racket and my right hand, which is my playing hand, is just sitting on the handle nice and soft in the same level of tension that I'm gonna play with. So I'm never really using this right arm when I'm in ready position. And that leads us into the next concept that we really need to get, and that's getting the body involved in your forehand. And the way we're gonna do that, believe it or not, is we're gonna use that left hand again. So you'll see all the players on tour these days and high performance players are really getting back into a good coil and the left arm position here and the hand off the shoulder is a key part of that because you can't help but get a good coil and a good shoulder turn with your left hand on the racket. So this is what you see all the top players doing. So really work on that. Work on having your left hand involved in the ready position, soft hand, strong coil. And now you're in a great position to exit the, take the left hand away and enter into your swing. But really work on building that strong coil. And when you're moving for a ball, you can still move with your hands together and then go right into your deepest coil to enter into your swing. And in conjunction with a strong coil, we also need to get a great balance with the legs. So for most of us, we've, we've been taught to step into our forehand and step in, but don't think about stepping in. Think about loading. And then if you put your left foot in, feel like more like you step down, but you're really setting up with your weight on your back leg. Okay, this is really the key position you need to get into, whether you put your foot in or you play open stance or semi-open stance, the setup has got to be strong on the back leg. So a good coil combined with a step out and a good strong load and get in this kind of a position. Now you can unleash and uncoil yourself into the ball and generate tremendous racketed speed. So next up, it's so important on the forehand that you know your contact points. And the contact point is defined as, a, as the ideal place both in width and depth where you make contact. So I think of the contact point as an intersection of two lines. One is parallel to the baseline, the other one is parallel to the sidelines. And that position for me with my grip and my position is out here in front of me. You can see the distance I have with my elbow away from my rib cage. So I'm out in front for this medium height contact point. Now, many players struggle with distance to the ball. So look where this contact range is. Look how far the elbow is from the ribs and look how the, the contact is out and away from me so I can get nice extension and drive out through the ball. So many club players struggle and get too close to the ball and end up hitting balls in here. What happens is I can't rotate my core and deliver that energy that I created in my coil. So if I get a good strong coil and I'm relaxed and I rotate in and I find the proper range, I can generate easy racket head speed. So you got to know your contact points. And if you look here on the YouTube channel, on my channel, my playlist for forehands, I do define the contact points. So check out that video. So next up, 
what do we do after contact? And of course, we've always heard follow through, follow through. But what I want you to do is have a clear intention. So when you're getting ready to take your swing into the ball, you have a clear intention to getting all the way through the ball and getting all the way through the finish. And you'll notice how my elbow is shoulder high and that I really delivered powerful rotation and then drive through the shoulder to get my elbow shoulder high and get here. And my intention is to get here long before I make contact with the ball. I really want to make one swing movement right through and get that elbow almost so it's in front of my chin up in this area for most of your forehands. And of course, there are variations depending on the height of the ball and the spin you're hitting. Some finishes will be lower, variation finishes will be higher. But for just your basic fundamental forehand, really enter into that shot and intend to get all the way through and get that elbow up here. And as a final tip and also bonus here for you, is you've got to create rhythm. And rhythm is a word that's often used. We hear commentators use it and players use it. But really, what is rhythm? I think of rhythm as balance and motion. And so you can get into a good, strong coil, but if you're stuck waiting and you're waiting for the ball, you break your rhythm. So you see good players do this, and it's a magical thing in a way, but they time their movement onto the ball so they can stay in motion and keep their rhythm of movement. Because if you have to stop and wait for the ball, it breaks that rhythm down. So stay in motion, try to apply your entire movement rhythmically and in motion to the ball, and that will help you quite a bit. And then another little key element here is that, of course, we want to emphasize a strong coil, but I don't want to get into my strong coil first because now I'm just waiting here in kind of an awkward position. So if you look carefully at, at most of the players, what they'll do is they'll make an initial coil, but then they'll go back and then bring it through. So what happens is, is they're here and they bring it back and they get a little bit more stretch in their coil, get the shoulders past the hips. They don't wait there though. They go here and then they just pull through the abdomen and through the hips and get that motion to, to stay fluid and rhythmic. So yes, get a strong coil, but don't get it first. Get yourself set to enter into the coil and then play your swing in one easy rhythm. And that will help you generate even more power. And then one final thought on the forehand and getting racket head speed, and some of you may be thinking about this already, the concept of lagging and snapping. And if you haven't seen some of my earlier videos here on the channel, check them out on the lag and snap and, and look at my position on it. And, and the position really is, is that if you do everything right in this video that we've gone through, the relaxation, good strong coil, right? Rotating back in, staying nice and relaxed, this lag will happen by itself. It's nothing that anybody is trying to create back here. That's really a myth. And you don't see players doing that. They're just soft and relaxed and the racket falls and comes forward by itself. And the degree of the lag has a lot to do with the speed in which you're moving and also the mobility that you have. So don't think about that. Let that be a natural byproduct of having a great fundamentally sound forehand with these concepts in mind. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you want a bigger forehand, try to build these concepts into your forehand and leave your comments down below and let me know how it's going for you. Give us a like and also subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. And if you want to dive deeper into your forehand and really get your fundamental sound, I've got a free gift for you. Just click on the link in the description down below to get my free mini course on the forehand that really covers the fundamental principles that you need to master to achieve your full potential on your forehand. Thanks for watching today's lesson and we'll see you in the next video.